Because there was such a big conversation about that. Is it onside? Is it offside? Does the fact that a Sundowns player is the last one to hit it and it touched him before it left make it that Mango's onside? It's exactly uh, nine about to go, ten after the hour, six on the mighty Metro FM. Tibor Touch and Lute Love, they're out of here for yet another day. They're back tomorrow between three and six. Do catch them for the best, and I mince not my words when I say this, drive show anywhere on the airwaves is on Metro FM. It's called The Touchdown every single weekday between three and six. This year is sports that amplified with Andila. I am Andila Ngube. There's quite a lot to do to this. I want to try and um, get to it quite quickly. I think the most uh, urgent one, the most pertinent one, being the chat we're about to have with the SAFA, the South African Football Association Head of Referees, Abdul Ibrahim, who's already on the line and holding. So we're going to have that conversation with him in a couple of seconds. But also, there was another goal that has even people that think they know offside thinking twice or three times about it. And that's the goal that was the equalizer for Swallows last night against Sundowns. Rulano Mukwena saying both goals were offside. Was it onside? Was it offside? The offside rule has changed so many times that some people have been left behind. So we'll catch you up on that. We'll call Victor Tlingwani, who in my opinion is the best. As far as analysis on radio and television of offside of refereeing decisions, for me, Victor Tlingwani is the best. So we'll give him a call and he'll let us know the rule pertaining to what we saw yesterday. Sundowns versus Swallows, the 2-2 draw, especially focusing on that second one. So, Coach Rana and I hope you're listening here. We're going to have him break it down with his vast knowledge of years of experience being a CAF and a DSTV Premiership referee. Um, we're also going to go to Europe, yeah? We're also going to go to Europe as well. But let's begin, perhaps, with the one that everybody's been talking about. Uh, every single coach, and I've got all the clips here. I've got it. I've got it when Coach Rulani complained, when Coach Ernst Middendorp complained, Guanele Coppo complained. You can go back to Romain Falls, Sia Dramovic, all the coaches that have complained about the standard of referee. But there's only one man that can clear our heads. It's Abdul Ibrahim, Safa Head of Referees, is on the line right now. So let's go straight to it. Abdul, it's been a while. Are you well? I'm very good, sir. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a while, man. What you been up to? Huh? Been busy? You know, you said to me that what you don't enjoy or like is getting these calls when the referees aren't doing well or when there's been an incident that hasn't been gotten right. You know, you'd also like the praise. Well, I'd like to tell you that every single Monday we have a feature that just looks at refereeing and we give you your praise as much as we, you know, call you for these sorts of things. And I hope that that does make it a little bit easier to say when you've done well, we do give you a heads up. Uh, you know, I, I guess it does. But I think what we should get more out there is the education of refereeing. You know, um, we should put more programs on, on the air that actually educates everybody with regards to refereeing and refereeing decisions. Um, and I think that would make things a lot easier. Where, according to you, is that level of referees, that standard that the referees have set? I'm not looking at, any, at anything past just this particular season. What do you think the refereeing standard has been? Uh, and I say this on the back of yet another coach complaining about the standard of refereeing. Uh, last weekend, you had two coaches in the NetBank Cup uh, quarterfinalists saying, hey, this is just not good enough. Last night again, another coach coming out saying this is not good enough. All of this lands on your desk, of course. According to you and what you've observed and what you've seen, where is that standard of your referees? You know, I I I I like to listen to people's comments as far as refereeing is concerned. And yes, these coaches and I and I and Ernst Middendorp was one, the coach from Omazulu was another. The coach from TS Galaxy was another, was another and now Rolani Mukwena also went in out criticizing referees and the officiating. But they don't give us any fact. When you speak about a topic, you must be informed about the topic. And the refereeing is unfortunately mm. one topic that a lot of our coaches do not know anything about. They know something about it. I heard Coach Rolani mention that he knows the laws of the game. The laws, knowing the laws of the game is one thing. Understanding it and how to apply the laws is something different. How to analyze a challenge, how to analyze offside, um, comes with consideration. 
which uh, goes back to the laws of the game. This is what is important. So, yes, I, I suppose opinions are going to be out there that the standard of refereeing is not good. When a mistake happens, you know, all of a sudden the refereeing uh, gets the blame, but that is not the case. Um, and, and, and somebody has said that, that, you know, I always defend refereeing. I don't defend refereeing. We need to look at the facts and the reality out there. Yes, mistakes do happen, and those mistakes are dealt with. People don't. People think, well, I think, you know, this is my opinion, that people think that the refereeing or the people involved in the refereeing sit back and relax and look at an error and say, ah, you know what, it's just another error. Let's, let's see what happens as far as that is concerned. No, we don't. Even in a match where there's absolutely no issues, no one makes a noise, no one says anything, we pick up things and we deal with it. And that is, to me, what is very important. I have listened to criticism in all my refereeing life, from the days that I officiated from the year 1999 all the way to when I retired in 2011. People criticize left, right, and center, but they will not come to you when they really look at an incident and realize that they've made a mistake, they will not come back to you and say, oh, I've made an error in, in the way I analyze it. So, you know what? Uh, everybody has an opinion as far as refereeing is concerned, but when we look at refereeing, we look at the overall picture. You know, a referee makes, like I've said in the past, a referee will make 20 to 30 decisions in a game. He gets one wrong. And now we criticize him as the worst thing as far as football is concerned. Um, and this is, this is unfortunately what we do. But at the end of the day, like I said, yes, errors do happen in the game, and we try and deal with it as best we, we possibly can. Abdul, I, and I completely hear that. It's just, it feels like, and you can tell me statistically, because you review all the games, you review all the decisions, you sit with the referees after it feels like this season in particular, I mean, uh, last season maybe a little bit better, but even then, I remember you saying to me that there needs to be a lot more work done, but, you know, it, 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 there's, there's space for improvement, basically, was what you said. Yes. You look at this always... season, you look at this season, it feels no. like there's just a lot more space that's needed, more than what it was last season. It feels like from where the standards were last season, this season has dropped even further as far as clinical decisions that decide big matches or any match, for instance, because if you're the team playing, it's a big match for you. It feels like there's just more decisions that are gotten wrong than right this season in comparison to others. What, as far as you know, as far as where you're sitting, when you look at the statistical facts, has this season been bad in comparison? Well, there may be one or two more errors than what happened last year, but if you look at last season and the season before, at the start of the season, there are always one or two little issues that creep, issues that creep into the game. Then you have a lull period, you know, where no one is moaning, no one is complaining, everything seems to be fine. Then you have a week or two when supposedly things are going wrong, there's one or two errors again, and then you have a quiet period again. And the same, that it has been exactly the same this year. But again, it doesn't mean that we are sitting still and doing nothing. Um, I will not say that the standard of refereeing has dropped from last year, from the season before to this year. No, there are still errors happening. And it's important for us to get to the bottom as to why these errors are occurring. Is it the individual? Is it something individual's life that is bringing into the game? Um, does he just not 100% understand the considerations that go with a particular incident? Those are all the kinds of things that we look at. You look so, at those things. I mean, we, we almost, uh, you know, nine, ten games to go, depending on the team that you're looking at to the end of the season. You've had 20 games just in the DSTV Premiership to look at why those decisions have been made. What have been your findings as to why we what, falter so much when we do? When we, when we look at matches, we, and, and let's say, for example, we see an error. For example, a red card should have been given here. We see a serious foul play challenge, but the referee doesn't blow the whistle. Uh, he doesn't even issue a card, etc. So now, when we analyze that incident, we would look at, one, the position of the referee, because obviously that is key. If a referee is 40 to 50 yards away from an incident, 
we cannot expect a credible decision. If a referee has an obstructed view, obviously the referee may not see something that everyone else is seeing on television, you know? And these are the kind of things that we that we talk about at our mid-season. We, positioning and reading the game is very, very key to match officials. And this is why we, what we instill in them come pre-season, even during our mid-season. You know, so there are various things that we pick up and we work, we work on them throughout the season. Like I said, Abdul Ibrahim may have had a quiet match, but there are one or two points in the game that no one may have picked up, but the assessor or the review committee may have. You know, and we may not recommend a rehabilitation period, but we get those referees to sit with uh, various instructors so that they can just go through that particular topic. So a referee, for example, we had an offside incident, so let's use the offside. So now we realize that, okay, fine, the team may have gotten an offside incident into it. Now we look at why. Was the AR correctly positioned? Was there good communication between the referee and the AR? You know, those are all the things we look at. And if there wasn't effective communication, if the AR wasn't well positioned, now he needs to sit down and firstly explain how he got to his decision, and then obviously the instructor will take him through the necessary. Uh, you know, you, uh, by the way, for those of you listening who are wondering why, uh, it's an agreement between Abdul and I, but also it is just a, a respect for Abdul. I cannot ask him to look at particular incidences um, of referees that have been gotten wrong or right. It is something that professionally he can't answer in any case. So it's not something that we're going to be going to. But Abdul, you say positioning, and we know that positioning is, is possibly one of the biggest part of a refereeing's job, to make sure that they at the right place to see the play. Yes, there's long balls that are played and they have to do the long track and they're not always in the right position. But with this particular referees in South Africa, my mind is going to go to the fact that they're not going to be positioned properly because these are the same ones that failed a physical assessment. When you say failed assessment, what are you referring to? In January? What happened in January during the assessment? There were referees that didn't quite make it, isn't it? Until you guys had to redo it. That is correct. And when when we did our investigations, we picked up an anomaly with the instructor that was involved. Hence, we had to do a retest, like we always do when, when we have match officials who play on. So then are you saying that the assessment was wrong, that the referees were actually fit enough? Uh, what we are saying is that we picked up an anomaly with the instructor, the physical instructor involved in doing the assessment, and it had to be rectified. The matter went to the NRC, and it was been decided to do a rerun. And like I said, we always do a rerun when match officials failed. And this was the rerun was done. It was carried out by Ms. Tracy Lovell, who is a FIFA physical instructor, and all the match officials passed it, the, the test rerun. I want to go back to your time even um, and, and, you know, a couple of years back when we would see South African referees going to CAF tournaments, going to, you know, FIFA tournaments. What is the ratio of our referees now going to those big tournaments for the great work that they're doing in this league, that they're being awarded and rewarded? I mean, I've got Tom in my mind. I've got Akona in my mind. Those are the only two that I can think of. Is this also normal that we're not getting recognition from our referees from you know a CAF perspective, from a, a, a FIFA perspective? Or is this further maybe conversation that we can have to say, has the standard really dropped? Okay. Um, I do remember 2006, we had Jerome uh, Damon Enoch Malefe. 2010, we had Jerome Enoch Malefe. 2014, we had Daniel Bennett. Uh, 20... What comes after 2014, 2018? <laughs> we had, we had Zakir Esuela. Um, I'm not sure who the referee was who was with him at the World Cup. And then 2020, last year, we had Victor Gomes. And like, not last year, the year before, Victor Gomes and Zakir Esuela. And at the moment? And our, our current um, referee is Abongile Tom. So I don't see... And our referees have been getting regular international matches. Um, Abogile Tom, Akona Makalima, Zakele Suela, um, Jenny Chavani, Alpha Satoli have been getting international matches. So I, 
I, I fail to see why everybody thinks, or, or you may make a comment that they are no longer getting the recognition. You must remember we also have two professional referees with CAF in Abu Tom and Akono Makalima. You know, so, so that trend, yes, we would love to see more names there. You know, like we would have loved to see Zakele Suela at the, at the AFCON. But, you know, when CAF, CAF makes a decision, exactly the same with FIFA. They have a panel of referees that they put through various causes, and at the end of the day, they have to select a final panel. You know, and um, it's not a matter of, oh, South Africa was not selected because they are not good enough. It's a matter of they got invited to, to all the causes, but didn't get to make the last panel for the final. So it's the same with every other country. Not all the referees that are invited to the initial causes are going to make the final group. And like we proved every year since 2006 till 2022, that our referees were exceptional enough to make the final panels. And this is, this is still where we keep our fingers crossed and hope that even CAF and FIFA make those final decisions to include South African match officials. I mean, Abdul, I can't complain. You've answered all my questions, but I sit here and I wonder and I watch football. There's no PSL game that I don't watch, be it live or maybe afterwards or maybe just seeing the incident. You sit where you sit right now as a SAFA head of referees. You look at the season that we've had. You honestly sit there and think to yourself, we've had a decent to good season. What? How would you, in, in, in your mind, having been involved for so long, you look at this particular season, you'd I rate it as a good season for the since, referees? Since, since I've been in office, I try and watch as many matches as I can. I know my hair has gone from, from some having some black hair to all grey. Um, but you must know, I'm I'm very critical of referees, um, and and I'm never happy, uh, 100% with refereeing performances. You know, there's always a point. There's always a point of improvement, and this is this is this is what people must understand. This is what we try and do all the time. We pick up something, we communicate with the instructors, and obviously they they get to take it further. You know, so so yes, there are those 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 very good, excellent games. Then there are the matches where referees make one or two errors, and, and those are the ones that really take the black out of my hair. You know, and, and it's not that we sit still and don't do anything. We, every year, every month, every week, we say that referees can improve, and we need to find ways and means. I mean, we've been talking VAR to South Africa for so long, um, but again, VAR may not solve all our issues. At the end of the day, the VAR is still a match official that needs to be trained. They use the same considerations that the referees do. It's just that they have the added benefit of additional video or video footage, whereas the referee has to make a split-second decision. You know, so at the end of the day, one, we are hoping that VAR uh, can come into South Africa sooner rather than later, and two, um, even having VAR may not solve all the decisions. I mean, we saw Mamelodi Sundowns versus the Young Africans. Uh, did the whole of the ball cross the line, cross the goal line? Oh, well, um, did it, Abdul? Did it? Did it? Did the... <laughs> <laughs> at, look, at the end of the day, we do not have conclusive evidence. And in the absence of that, the VAR did the correct thing to stick to the referee's on-field decision. And that is all he could tell the referee. I have no conclusive evidence. Therefore, the on-field decision remains. So, had but, we had a camera on the goal line or we had goal line technology, it would have made the job so much easier. Abdul, you're speaking about VAR. And there's big questions because we see it here and we see it work when there's CAF matches, when there's big international matches of, of that format. How far are we? Well... The refereeing is ready to commence with training. Um, but the discussions are ongoing. Um, and we need to appoint a VAR project manager. And as soon as that is in place and we have the necessary budget in place, we can let people know that this is what we require. But the refereeing is ready to go. In, in the country currently, we have two of, two of the top FIFA VAR instructors in Jerome Damon and Victor Gomes. Um, all we would need to do is bring in a FIFA instructor who could oversee the entire process, and we can commence our VAR training. 
So All we need is a 10, 10 to 14 day extensive training program. And not just match officials. I'm also talking now um, technical replay operators that are involved in the in the um, VOR. You know, so we are ready. It's just a matter of uh, the powers that be. So, Abdul, I'm that correct to say it. it's not going to be next season. Forget about it. There's not enough time to implement everything that you've just said. It's not going to be next season. Well, we, we keep our fingers crossed that something can happen. If not now, then during next season. All right. Before um, I, I, I let you go as well, I mean, there was a, a complaint from Sia Dramovic, which I think this would particular be for you, and this is something that I'm hoping you can answer. Um, the allocation of referees to games. He said four games. I think he said in a row, but he said four games, the same referee, not been good in any of the games as far as he's concerned, but he still gets the same referee refereeing his games. Speak to us four about the, the, the allocation of, of, of games to referees. Four games in a row for the same team, that is impossible. That is impossible. You must know that the appointments come through my office and those are the kind of things that I look at. And what about, close, what about in close succession then? No, sir. We don't, we don't, uh, uh, we try to keep referees away from teams at least uh, uh, two weeks or two matches. Um, but you must also know there's a lot that goes into appointments. You know, um, if we need a particular referee for a particular match, then that is the appointment that will be made. But as far as I know, referees do not do teams two weeks, two matches, or even sometimes even three matches in a row. No, sir. That's not possible. Four matches, the same referee? No. Hmm. Well, uh, Siat, Tim, Sugazi, I know you listen to the show. I hope you heard that there. You know, um, and Abdul, I get it. The referee makes one mistake, and that mistake is what's spoken about. But it's the mistake that decides the match, isn't it? It is not just a mistake where a player, um, you know, takes the ball out or handles it in the middle of the park. It is a difference between a position in the PSL, a win of a trophy, millions of rands, and the loss thereof. So, surely... That is, you know, something that I would think would be held in higher regard. But I hear you, and I must be very honest. I don't have any more. Um, you know, the stats sit with you guys, and if you're looking at the stats and you're saying to me that it is no different from any other season, it feels like it. I must be honest. It feels like it. It's more complaints from coaches than ever, from fans than ever. It's more critical decisions that we have to bring here with our referee, Victor, here, and say, hey, what do you make of this and this? It feels like it's a worse season. But you're saying to me, you're looking at the stats, and it is pretty much, you know, the same incidences here and there that need relooking and reworking and, you know, just getting the guys trained better. That is it, the bottom line. We need we need to ensure... Hello? I can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. So there's an incoming call from the same number that called me. Um, and, and as I was saying, that is that is the bottom line. You know, we... We don't want to have the same season as last year or the year before. We want to keep improving. This is why we, we work as hard as we can as far as refereeing is concerned. Like I said at the start, referees are, are human. And we try our best to ensure, no, not try our best, we know that we are giving them the best information because the information we get comes directly from FIFA. The interpretations we get comes directly from FIFA. You know, and and this is what we give to our match officials. The same training they will get if they should go on a FIFA course um, at any at any FIFA workshop is exactly what they get here in South Africa. So it's a matter of ensuring that our referees are always uh, 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 mentally uh, okay, that they are physically okay, they are technically okay. You know, and it's and it's also important to to touch base with them on a personal basis. Because just like everybody else in this world, we all go through personal things, you know, and, and that could hamper performances. And I'm not saying that there are external things that are hampering referring performances, but it can happen. But we are always trying to improve from one year to the next. We haven't quite done it this year, uh, Abdul. I'm hoping that next year, perhaps, it'll be a lot better. But thank you so much for talking to us. I always... Uh, you know, respect and appreciate that you make time to answer these questions. And we hope that we will do and do improve a little bit 
Uh, right now, though, we need to go teach people about that offside rule from yesterday's game. <laughs> no problem at all. You, as you said earlier, you know I won't comment on that, unfortunately. I do realize this. I wish sometimes you would, you know, just uh, maybe I must get you on a Sunday evening. Uh, are you, you know, a uh, couple of glasses of red wine? Uh, that's your thing I hear, Abdul? Maybe maybe <laughs> when I get to retire totally from refereeing, then you and I can chat. Are you thinking about retirement already? No, I'm just saying, you know what, I'm, 50, I'm going to be 58 years old. You never know when people You're 58 years young. Enough. Come on. <laughs> you never, like I said, you never know when people decide that I have enough in refereeing. So, yeah, we'll see. Abdul Ibrahim, head of referees at Safa. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Only a pleasure. Thank you very much. He's out here. It's exactly 18.35. Let's take a quick break. Then when we come back, Victor Tlungwan is on the line already. He's waiting. Like I said to you guys, when it comes to refereeing decisions, you can't tell me different to what Victor Tlungwan has told me. As, as much as when, when Victor said it to me, it is the Bible. I've seen Victor at the biggest games uh, at CAF uh, in the DSCB Premiership. He's won the, the best referee in this country. He's even got more experience now. So we'll go straight to him uh, after this before we go to Europe. Uh, it's the offside rule and the offside, is it a goal or is it not a goal? Should it have been offside? That's got the whole of football talking because uh, seemingly people don't quite understand or know the rule or the interpretation of the rule is different. Victor Tlungwane, the principal, is what we call him. Now, uh, he's joining us on the line because we want to talk about last night's game. Solos versus Sundowns. Vic? <laughs> Listen, uh, the reason I think, you know, we just spoke to Abdul now and he says, no, man, you know, it's no different from any other season as far as the, the, the levels of refereeing is concerned. Do you know why I think it's a lot? Do you know why I think it's worse? Yeah. Because I'm calling you a lot more than I did last year. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you are talking a lot more. But let's go to last night. Coach Rana Mugwena is convinced that uh, it was offside that stole two points from his team. Yes, Coach Rana Mugwena speaking about yesterday's incidents. It's the third time this season Sundowns has VAR. Third time this season. Third time. And you are not writing about it. it. Both goals are offside. The, f the, the first goal is an offside. The second goal is also offside. And I don't need to be explained. I study the laws of the game very, very well. I don't have my licenses because of fun. I, I went to a coaching school. I studied the, the... You can ask me about any law of the game. I know the laws of the game. It's one of the most important things to know before you coach. You know, he, he might say they don't write about it, but Victor, you remember, we spoke about it and I asked you, I said, oh, I remember it was the game at Loftus. I asked you those questions, but you know what? Let me not tell you. Have a listen. I haven't spoken about the referees the entire season. I, this time I will speak because that is very bad. And that's not a mistake. That You know when we make mistakes, no? it's mistakes, but that's not a mistake. The, ref, the, the, the assistant ref, he, pu he, puts, he, he puts the flag for offside. Then they consult. Who are you consulting? Who is Jelly consulting? Okay, you tell me who is Jelly consulting. He went to the assistant ref. He stood there. He put the hand. He's, he's talking to somebody. Who is he talking? VAR. You have VAR in South Africa now all of a sudden. Vic, this is something that's concerned me even. And I've asked you about it to say when decisions get overturned because the referee called it and then he stands there and he thinks about it and then overturns the decision as if he's watching it back in his mind. Let's perhaps start with that. Yeah, uh, let's start with the two uh, offside goals that uh, Coach Okay, Orlando we can. Is. Yeah. Uh, the first one, um, uh, there is an element of offside. We just need to draw the line to, uh, you know, as a ten ourselves that in beat. But um, Charlie, when the ball was played, it looks like it's in front of the defender who's far. But for us to be 100% sure, we need to draw the line. But when Coach Rulani says uh, both goals were offside, he has a smaller case there where if we draw the line, we find the shoulder of the player is in front because it's only the end of the opponent on the far side that uh, put him on side. So when we draw the line, we'll be able to ascertain whether indeed uh, the shoulder of Mchali was in front then offside. But then that will need our image, you know. But uh, when we come to the next one, um, in terms of uh, the, 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 the communication system that the referees have, uh, there's four officials there. Uh, at any time, they can communicate. Uh, they can communicate with anyone outside. Uh, the match commissioner has an additional set, but he cannot have an input on the on the on the officials on the field of play. They have to communicate and make up a call from that perspective. Now, coming to 
um, the interpretation of the laws uh, when we started this hold, season, hold on hold on hold on very quickly Atari. you're saying you know he's allowed to so if he's listening in his ear he's either listening yeah. to the two assistants or to the fourth official that's who he's listening to exactly yes and therefore informed by what they're saying he can then change his mind without seeing anything right and you're assuring me again that the fourth official sitting halfway line, because that's yeah. where he sits, yeah. he does not look at any apparatus that could assist him visually before he overturns a decision. You're telling me that when there's goal mouth action, like that first Sundowns goal perhaps, he can yeah. see it from there without watching the screens that the teams watch or, or the broadcasters got there. You're saying those decisions are made without him seeing a screen. Uh, exactly, uh, um, the photo shell is not allowed and cannot go to the screen. Remember, he's sitting between the two benches. His job is to control the two benches. The, 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 what the bench sees and the two benches sees while they are sitting there, they can see everything that is happening in the penalty area. If, but in terms of law, we expect the referee who's closer to the action to give us a credible decision because he's in a credible position. So now when a referee uh, cannot give a decision and he, he communicates with someone who's far, it's inappropriate because someone who's closer need to give us a credible position decision as when we yeah, because training, that fourth official of positioning, in terms it's of the best carrot in the world. They will teach us that you need to get to a better position in order to see. So someone who's far cannot see better than you who is closer. Okay, let's get to that second goal now. Uh, the second goal, uh, when we started the season, uh, I said to you that this new rule uh, that is uh, FIFA has introduced is going to confuse many people. And I even said to you, Ma'a, that uh, uh, someone who has played football will easily interpret this than someone who has not played football in terms of the referees. But let's go through the law, Ma'a. Uh, it says uh, deliberate play. Remember we said deliberate play and deflection. Now, let's go to deliberate play because there was no deflection in that incident. Uh, deliberate play uh, is when a player has control of the ball with the possibility of passing the ball to a teammate, gaining possession of the ball, clearing the ball by kicking or heading it. That is the definition of deliberate play by law, that the player must have control of the ball. If it goes further down, it says the following criteria should be used as appropriate as indicators that a player uh, was in control of the ball and as a result can be considered to have deliberately played the ball. Now, let's Go one by one, my uh, uh, You look at that incident. The ball was played from a distance. So the consideration one, it says the ball traveled from distance and the player had a clear view of the ball. Yes, Lunga, the ball was traveling from a distance. He had clear of the ball. We give it a tick. Now we go to the next one. Uh, the ball was not moving quickly. Now, me and you can answer this one. Was the ball moving quickly or slowly? And if you look, uh, it was a long ball. So we can say the ball was moving quickly because a long ball, you have to shoot it. And then we come to the next one. Uh, the direction of the ball was not unexpected. Now, we can say the player expected the ball because he could see, he could move towards the ball to position himself in order to play it. We go to the next one. The player had time to coordinate their body movement. This is the big one, Ma'a. Does the player have time to coordinate their body movement? If you move in a reverse, uh, do you have time to coordinate your body movement? The answer is no. Even a car will reverse it. You cannot reverse it 100 because you have to be careful of the movement. Then the last one, a ball moving on the ground is easier to play than a ball in the air. So if you look at that incident, the ball was moving in the air. So when the ball moves in the air, and then traveling at high speed, and you are moving backwards. Will you be able to control the ball as a key determining factor that the player was in control of the ball? The answer is no. So that's where offside comes in. That's when the assistant referee uh, drew uh, the consideration and flag for offside because he feels that the player was backpedaling. He never had control of, of, of the ball. That's why he headed the ball in that direction. And then Mango was in an offside position. So that is, uh, you know, it, it's said offside gaining an advantage when the ball that uh, rebounds or uh, was saved or was played to him uh, 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 and, and he gained advantage uh, by being in that position. So in this situation, uh, offside 
gaining an advantage by being in that position because of yeah. this uh, new uh, consideration. Uh, 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 so basically what you're saying is that second goal, Swallows versus Sundowns, the mango goal that gets headed back after the long ball it yeah. should have been ruled offside. The, 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 uh, the assistant referee should not have been overruled. Exactly. If you remember, Ma'a, when we played in Egypt, we played, we beat Egypt, one not through a lost goal, we went on to play in Nigeria. Uh, Lungu, uh, 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 not Lungu, Zungu, uh, scored a goal after a Nigerian player, defender, headed the ball. He jumped and he headed the ball. Uh, uh, Zungu was in an offside position. He scored that ball. That ball was given to us as a goal because that law was not changed. Then FIFA came to change this law and say deliberate play is when a player has control of the ball. Previously, we didn't care about control. Once you play the ball, you jump, you have played the ball. Now they made a new change that, to me, it's confusing, but it needs a thorough understanding in order to interpret this. I was not surprised when the referees differed in that decision because I said it from the beginning of the season that this is going to create problems because control of the ball is a little bit difficult. But then when you go one by one and dissect it, that's when you find out, you know, in terms of control of the ball, as the player is reversing, it's difficult for you to control the ball in the air while you are reversing. So, okay. The bottom line, though, that was offside. Should have stayed offside after the assistant referee said it was offside. Jedi Shivani should not have changed the decision. Rulani is correct. He studied the rules and the rules that he was speaking of should have stood. Because of this new consideration. I wonder. Jedi Shivani, does he know the new consideration? I, I will leave that to the instructors. <laughs> <laughs> Victor Shivani, I appreciate you. You've spoken. The principal has spoken. School is out. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank, Thank you so please. much. It's 1848 on the Mighty Metro FM. There, you heard it, guys. Because there was such a big conversation about that. Is it onside? Is it offside? Does the fact that a Sundowns player is the last one to hit it and it touched him before it left make it that Mango's onside? Well, Rulani, you were spot on there, according to Victor Tlungwan. Drop us a voice note on 60 um, Andile, look, I totally disagree with the ref there. I think maybe he's also tired. He just needs to take a break from the sports. But look, if there's electricity, there's no reason to praise ESCOM because that's what they're supposed to do. If a ref mm. takes 20 to 30 decisions in a game and those decisions are not game-changing decisions, it's fine. But if a ref goes on to make a terrible mistake that changes on the game with statuses, leaks involved, qualifications, all these things are involved... We're bound to focus on that, and that's where the you know the problem is, not the number of decisions that they get right, but the crucial decisions 100%. that they actually do get wrong, which is something that is on the rise right now. You're 100 percent, but see, it becomes difficult when we don't sit with the statistics of wrong decisions because that's something that Safa keeps to themselves. So I can only rely on what Abdul tells me. If I say, look at the seasons previously, look at this season, it looks really bad, and he says, no, it's actually quite the same. Uh, there has not been an improvement, nor has there been a, a downward spiral of decisions. We can only but accept what he says. So now, football. He decided that you are getting marginal decisions. Just one mistake if I look over closely. The team the corner will not one not. So one mistake I on a river to him. And that's what I was saying. You know, it only takes one decision. One decision. Hi, Andile. You know what? I'm here listening to you and to Mr. Abdul. Mr. Abdul is like he's protecting the, the reveries. So these guys are causing the people's job. So they don't understand the, the law of the game. So I feel pity uh, for the coaches, you understand? Mm. Every day, every every game, there are some mistakes. And those mistakes are causing people's job, you understand? So I feel very, very, very bad for the coaches. Thank you so much. My name is Andres. Andres, I appreciate it. Evening, ma. I call them. Tell too much. I will reflect, man. No, same thing too much. Ah, uh, same thing too much. 
Nale he good bachoru. Umi se la raya fufaila utu kabanga disisi ne che moye. Asa iche iche. Ah niyizo agal. Ah niyizo ah niyizo. Amele ba bo bo kela pas ba lungis. Hmm. Even in Metro FM, even in Gandile. Hey. Just one question. To David, ne? Uh, remember, there's this rule before the introduction of a VAR, especially since when you don't have VAR in South Africa. The rule says, reverse this genie is final. It's still okay. the rule. So now, after that game, yeah, yesterday, yeah, sundowns, which means uh, 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 the referee's decision is no longer final because initially it was given as an offside, and then Jerry Chavan had to go and consult. I can say, even now, well, it's like now, we Mike. Then the decision was overturned. The goal was given. So my question is that the first decision is no longer final. It's no longer resting back. Thank you. Hmm. Uh, let's take the calls. I want to take the calls. Let's speak to some people. Mlungisi is out in Enanda. Mlungisi. Hello, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. Go for it. I'm very disappointed with the head of uh, referees. I will give you some few details there. Go there for was it. a game between Amazule and Chipa. Last day, you can go and check it on the 28th of October 23. It was on the dying minutes of the game. Pavele Mota hold the ball, and then the, the guy by the name of uh, Capito, and then he, he kicked the, 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 the goalkeeper, and then it ended up in the Queen uh, Nets. And also, there was a game between Amazul and uh, Sundown. And the Amazul scored the goal, then they say it was the offside. And also, I don't know it was between. Amazulu or and Skukune or Polokwani, where the 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 keeper while Bambi Polo while Kassel and the defender, of, I don't know it's a Polokwani, he holds it with the hand. I thought that time Amazulu was supposed to get the penalty. And also this past weekend, same Pirates get the 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 the, the battle like penalty and see. See by the end of the day, Amazulu didn't play this well in the season, but we are even there for some of the of the league. The the reason. It's also we have to blame the referee. Yeah, I'm that looking. Wrong. Unfortunately, Abdul cannot. Even if I ask him individual question to say, what do you think of this decision? He's not allowed by uh, his job, the laws that I, govern his job. He's not allowed to tell he, us good. This decision was wrong. This one was he, right. He's, he's not allowed, to, allowed to tell us. You know, this referee was good. This referee is bad. We can't even get a match report to say, hey, these referees made this many wrong decisions. All we have to rely on is when I ask him. What is the level? And he says it's it's growing. It can be better. There's nothing uh, else. It, it was worse. But if you can check all this, what I told you, Amazon they are there in the bottom because of their referees. At the end of the day, we're gonna blame the coaches. But the, the referees' performance is very poor. No, I appreciate you. Let's go to Dixon Gomplang. It's been a while, Dixon. Welcome. Hi, Andy. How are you? No, no, no. I'm good, man. How are you? You know that that is Afro man. There. Yeah, you know, the, the song goes like, I was supposed to blow for offside, but I was high. I could have read the rest of the game, but I was high. You know, and the, always when the leader one is, is, is officiating the game, I always look for controversy. I know something is going to happen. Yeah, but Dixon, man, uh, I'm, let's I'm, respect I'm, him a little bit, man. But he, I guess you're speaking about the Afro, you're saying he looks like the Afro man. You're not saying he was high, you're saying he looks like the Afro man, right? Yeah, but Andy, this guy always, all the time, almost all the time, when he's officiating the game, it's always something's going to happen. Yeah. Something's going to happen. Well, Our he got friends? it wrong last night. He got it wrong last night. That's official. Dixon, I always appreciate your support. We don't always agree, Dixon, but you're more than welcome all the time. Let's go to Tumelo. Uh, Tumelo is out in the south of Johannesburg. Oh, Tumelo's gone. Mike in Sasselberg. Hey, Mike. Andy, yeah. I'm good, man. Go for it. Uh, Gmuna, I think to two things. One, I now feel like we are being too harsh on our referees. Because remember, mm. these people have to make decisions on the spot, right? So now we're watching from our TVs and there's replays and all of that. So the referees people they have to make split-second decisions. That's number one. Number two, and the governor of Yama one, they are sundown. It has taught me two things. One, uh, it has taught. Look, I think Kuri, seen as at any given point in time. For me, I give me Kalaya so there are twenty three I mean eleven, eleven there are twenty three players on the field. Eleven right? with including the ref, yeah. Including the referee. So I think I think maybe maybe just maybe maybe it's time that we introduce 
Molaonyana or Ijeng, so that referees can also be eligible for men of the match award. Right? <laughs> because they play, if you think about it, look on a bad Mike, Mike, I want to go to your first point. Uh, I want to go to your first point. My second point. My second point is our physical balance on the Ravois. You know, I was watching the game yesterday from uh, our friends in Renberg. Ah, those people, they were, they were very convinced that that thing was offside. Even I was convinced it was offside. Because you were From convinced the, by them. Uh, <laughs> Mike, I appreciate you. Bye bye. Bye bye, Mike. Lucibe, faith is walking. You know what it means when faith is walking? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, buddy. I'm listening. No, it's fine. You know what, Nick? I'm not going to come on a metro and say Victor is better than whoever who's in Rambeck or whatever, or one is higher than whoever. But why must we come on radio and praise a fish for, for, for swimming? swimming? And that's what I was going to say to the previous caller to say your point one, it's null and void. It's their job. If you're yes. teaching a, a class of 50 kids, you can't say no, the teacher can't handle a class of 50 kids must pass. Thank you. I think you, me and you agree. And uh, you can continue with faith. Thank you. Are you can continue. Mara Lisibe, Mara Wito, now let's hail it. Bye-bye. Lisibe, what in the guru leni. And he's right. It's uh, almost top of the hour, 7 o'clock. Thank you so much. Faith is up next. Pela, pela. Manzoni.